Thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, congratulations to all of you who are still there after a more than two years to, to, to house session without a break. So congratulations to all of you. Um, we are a bit behind schedule, so I'll try to be uh, as uh, interesting as possible with a quite technical topic, uh, which hopefully have been already introduced by uh, um, Svetlana earlier today. Uh, it's uh, about uh, GSM EUICC uh, remote provisioning architecture. Just a few words before I start. Uh, so I guess that a number of you do not know anything about Simulity. Uh, so what we are doing today is that we are actually a technology provider uh, developing a SIM card operating system as well as SIM card management platforms. Uh, we are not delivering that as, as uh, SIM cards to uh, the operators. We are actually uh, have a number of customers in uh, various regions of the world that actually do take the chip take our chip with our OS and then put that into a smart card and then deliver to the MNO. Uh, so that's what we are doing today. Uh, but obviously, uh, well, thanks to this uh, re remote, provision, uh, remote provision architecture that I'll describe, uh, we feel that uh, the business models are really changing, uh, especially for obviously IoT uh, connected devices, where uh, we actually see that uh, the, the same chip actually will be used to store uh, very secure uh, information uh, coming from uh, various uh, different uh, operators. So, a uh, few things about IoT first. I mean, uh, we've, I mean, you've probably read a number of uh, figures already uh, throughout the, this uh, two days. Uh, we we have all different figures, the different uh, years, etc., where. Uh, the, the M2M and the connected homes, connected cars, etc., uh, will reach a certain figure. Uh, just, I, I've just taken two figures. Uh, one, which is that, uh, just to show how it, the growth actually of the of the um, of the IoT and, and the, the different elements required to build the secure IoT solutions. Uh, so, in 2013, the global M2M industry had a size of around 40, 45 million billion, sorry, dollar, and it's forecast to be 200 billion by 2022. Uh, so you can see that uh, obviously it's, it's just huge, I mean, compared to what it was only two years ago. And another one on the growth uh, coming from the GSMA, and a figure coming from the GSMA, is that uh, as February 2004, 2014, uh, M2M accounted for uh, over 2.8% uh, of all connected devices. So it's definitely growing uh, and dub doubling the figure of 2010. So it's I mean, it's something that we cannot uh, avoid, and we need to find uh, the right solutions for uh, this new uh, use of, uh, I mean, connected uh, and, and bringing connectivity to those devices. So, how are those devices connected today? Uh, a number of con are connected through uh, Wi-Fi to, I mean, local networks, but some of them are, are not. It's not possible to connect them uh, with a local uh, network, uh, in which case you use uh, mobile networks, of course. And that, those are a few examples of uh, the connectivity that, uh, well, the, the, the devices that need connectivity that cannot uh, be uh, through local networks. The first one is a smart meter. Smart meter. Uh, we have also in the same range smart sensors. One of the use cases that we've seen here um, before uh, today, I mean, it was obviously the car, the connected car, but also any kind of uh, smart terminals. So the way to uh, connect those devices today is just to insert uh, a SIM card into, uh, into it. And that works, that works quite well. You get connectivity, you get data connectivity, uh, and it's quite, 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 it's working, I mean. So why do we need something else? Uh, and probably one of the main uh, reasons is uh, the life cycle of the devices. It's not coming, yeah, it's coming now. Uh, I've uh, had a look at the average lifetime for the devices. Uh, for smart terminals, you can see eight years, car, 10 years, I mean, it's average figures, of course. Um, sensors, it can be up to 20 years, but meters, it can be up to 50 years. So that's where we have an issue, because uh, you cannot imagine that you will be stuck with one operator uh, for uh, 50 years, uh, or even 20 years, or even 10 years. I mean, it's huge. I mean, obviously, new operators will come into the place, or new offers, and the user, the end user, want to benefit from the best, uh, the best connection or uh, just the best offer uh, to connect the device. So, uh, what are the advantages first on, on, on using the SIM card as the, the situation is today? 
It provides a global connectivity every time, everywhere. So that's obviously a key point why uh, we should be using SIM cards. Uh, it's available, it's proven, it's there for uh, more than 20 years, it's working. It's also secure. I mean, uh, Leticia has insisted on uh, how secure, I mean, uh, the, and the security it brings really to the system uh, through the authentication. So it's a key point also uh, when connected to those devices. And it's uh, the most important point probably is it's standard. I mean, every SIM card uh, is following standards, the, the same for the handsets. So, and any SIM card can be inserted in any handset. So that's also a kind of proven ecosystem for uh, a number of years. Now, what are the drawbacks? Uh, the first one uh, is the size. Uh, so the SIM card is, uh, as the size is uh, going down, every, uh, every new standard is coming from 2FF, 3FF, 4FF. I mean, the plastic is reducing. You can't reduce much than the, the chip itself, but uh, it's, it's going down in terms of size. But still, it's, uh, well, it takes a lot of space in very small devices. It's not only the SIM card, but to connect the SIM card, you need to have a SIM card reader. And then you need to, to put some pins, which are, could be some, somehow tricky in a very small uh, devices. So first, we have a size issue. Uh, but probably one of the main issues is uh, that you're bound to one operator. I mean, those devices uh, are, are, I mean, you can insert a SIM card, but for some of them, like a car, I mean, it's probably hidden behind the, the, the engine, I mean, or you don't know exactly where. So it's very difficult to access it. So uh, that's why it's difficult to change the SIM card. And if uh, your car manufacturer has no agreement with uh, another SIM card supplier or another operator, uh, then you're, you're stuck. Uh, it's very difficult to swap for the reasons I said. Sometimes it's very, uh, I mean, it's not accessible physically in the device because it's too small, because it's hidden. And uh, Another issue is uh, regulation. Uh, being stuck again with one operator for, for 10 years is something that the, in the various countries in Europe, but anywhere, uh, will be a concern for the, the telecom regulators that do not obviously like that uh, there is a system that bonds you to one single operator uh, for a number of years. So that's all the issues that we have to address. And that's basically what uh, uh, this, uh, well, the GSM has tried to address. But let's come to the first one, the size. Uh, for the size, uh, as I said, I mean, the SIM card uh, form factors has evolved from uh, the, 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 most, the oldest one, which is called the 2FF, for plug-in SIM, uh, which was a bit big and which became too big for a number of uh, uh, smartphones and, uh, or smaller phones. It has now evolved, and the main deliveries are now in the 3FF form. So it's, the, again, the chip is the, the same size, but just the plastic, but, uh, the, the part of the plastic has been reduced. Uh, and uh, so more recently, we also had uh, an even smaller form factor, sorry, uh, which is called the 4FF, so force form factor, or nano SIM. Uh, <coughs> but still, yes, you had a plastic, you have an interface to, uh, uh, you need a reader to, to insert those slims, SIMs. And uh, that's why we, well, a new form factor called MFF2, so for M2M form factor, has been designed where you have actually the chip which is embedded into now hard plastic with only the contacts. So the contacts are ex exactly the same as a SIM card, it's the same interface, uh, but it's just uh, an even smaller form factor, uh, and which is not bound to be inserted in a slot, but directly soldered into uh, the device. Okay, so it's built within the device, uh, and uh, so that's obviously uh, uh, is easier actually for uh, the device manufacturer to, uh, to put it in the, in the design. So let's say the size issue has been sorted out through this uh, new form factor. But then we still have the other issues that we faced. Uh, and that's what has been addressed by uh, the GSMA recently, or, well, the GMS, GSMA is working on it for a few years now. But the specifications have been released and are, are really uh, uh, more and more are coming in terms of uh, testing, in terms of interoperability. And that's what I will try to describe uh, before uh, the end of my speech. Uh, so, it has, it's really an initiative by the GSMA uh, to promote a, a common uh, remote provisional architecture for new, uh, for new usage, actually, of the SIM card or, or on the, chi or the chip. It's really uh, promoted and endorsed by a number of people, uh, especially uh, mobile, uh, well, mobile operators, uh, SIM suppliers, etc. And it's a technical specification that will enable the remote uh, installation and management of 
prof what we call operator profile. So everything that really is specific to an operator within the SIM card. And this specification is bound to accelerate the M2M market uh, because it will provide, reduce the cost and increase the, 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 the flexibility a lot. So what are the uses, actually, of this uh, embedded uh, UICC and the requirements that have been taken by the GSMA to build this uh, new architecture? The first is, the obvious one, is the provisioning of multiple subscriptions onto the same uh, device, onto the same chip. Uh, that's the, 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 the bottom line, actually. Uh, be able to use the same chip for different operators. The second one is, obviously, uh, the need to have a first subscription. When the, when the chip is designed, uh, or is, let's say it's uh, manufactured or embedded into the, the device that needs connectivity, uh, there is a need for a first subscription, because if you don't have any subscription when it's manufactured, you won't be able to uh, do anything with it. So there is, uh, yes, this need for this first subscription, or what we call provisioning profile. And then the ability to, at any time, change the subscription from one to the other. And that's what is really the target, to swap, to allow the user to benefit from another subscription for any kind of reason. There, the requirements include, included also the need to stop a subscription uh, when you don't want to use it anymore. And lastly, to transfer one subscription to one device to another one. So that's the requirements that have been addressed by the GSMA. Uh, and that's basically uh, now the elements that are required to, uh, to make that real. The first, obviously, is what you call EUICC or embedded UICC, also called embedded SIM. Uh, so it's functionally equivalent to SIM. Uh, but when it is manufactured, there is a provisioning profile uh, dedicated to one operator that will be, yes, the, the kind of bootstrap. Uh, so, so you have connectivity when you start uh, to, uh, yes, to, to connect to that network. Uh, it could be to use it, but it could be also to just immediately change to another network. But you need, obviously, a, a trigger for it, and that's the provisioning profile. And then the technical specification will accommodate the declaration or loading or installation of any kind of new profile, new MNO profile, into the, the, the chip. Then the second element is the subscription manager. So, obviously, uh, all I mean, this swap of subscription or loading a new subscription needs to be managed by an element on the network side, and that's the subscription manager. So it manages the cards, so the, the, the chips, the embedded uh, UICC, to generate a new SIM profile uh, in real time and to manage the execution of the MNO policy because different MNO would have different security policies, and that's also addressed by, by the specification. And the last is the secure routing of those profiles uh, into the, the EU ICC. So that's the two main elements. And the second one, the third one, sorry, is obviously the MNO uh, that will uh, obviously use uh, the subscription manager to, uh, well, load profiles on this subscription manager so yes, the user are able to use their, their network. So, and obviously one of the key elements is that there is a maximum reuse of the existing interfaces uh, existing for SIM cards today. So, to be brief, that's really uh, the architecture, uh, the, uh, an overview of the architecture of this remote provisioning uh, system uh, with, with three main elements. The, the, the one the, in, in the, the bottom being the EUICC, so that's the chip connected to the device. And then on the subscription management side, we have two main elements, two separated elements. One is called the SMSR, Subscription Manager Secure Routing. So that's the element of the system that will be able to uh, well, allow you to load uh, new profiles, uh, enable or disable a uh, profile on the card, or delete a profile from the chip. So that's only, yes, loading, installing, deleting profiles uh, from any, any MNO uh, that uh, would be uh, involved in the system. And a separated role is called the SMDP, S uh, Subscription Manager da Data Preparation, which is actually uh, the entity that securely uh, well, provision the profiles on the platform, uh, and that handles the installation, actually, of the profiles onto the, onto the chip. So there is a separate role between the loading of the profile and the installation of the profile, which, is, which can be addressed by the same party, but also can be, uh, well, dedicated to different uh, operators in the system. 
So what is changes in the, in the life cycle is the old model for SIM card was that the card was manufactured, then obviously an, uh, an operator was selected to, uh, to use this SIM card. The, the SIM card was personalized with the data from this MNO. Then the SIM card was distribu distributed to the users, activated, and then used. And after it has been used, then it's, the, it was, it's over. I mean, the, the, the card needs to be, uh, to be removed. Uh, and that's two different steps, pre-issuance, post-issuance. With the new mechanism uh, defined by the remote uh, provisioning architecture, obviously the EUICC is still manufactured, personalized, with a provisioning profile, so the first initial profile. Then it is distributed to the user. But then only after it is distributed, at any time you can select or change uh, the profile, the MNO that you want to use. Then it's personalized uh, with, this, uh, with this profile, used, and then the subscription is ended, but you can go back again to select a new operator, a new profile is personalized, etc., etc. So that really uh, obviously offers much more flexibility in the way you use it, and it's just again, again a new business model where uh, the operator is not anymore uh, controlling the card, it's really uh, another actor in the system that would do it. Uh, and for, for cars, we obviously imagine that the car maker would be the one that would want to operate the, those platforms. But uh, yeah, depending on the use cases, it can be different actors uh, that needs to have agreements with the MNO to, to get all the provisionings, to get all the profiles, so the operating profiles to, to be loaded, and then to securely handle the, 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 the loading and installation of them. So, and that's the architecture within the, the EU ICC chip. Uh, it's probably too late now to, to detail all the, the elements, but you see that for each uh, profile, so here uh, in this blue box, we have all the elements of one single operator profile, which includes a number of files, which includes applications dedicated to the operator, but also policy rules. So you can have different rules, again, for different operators. And that's included into what we call a security domain, uh, so which is an area in, in the card that will be strictly isolated from the others. And then you have, uh, beside, another profile that will have the, exactly the same architecture, file system, etc., applications, etc. But uh, obviously, at any time, you can only have one profile enabled. So you can have one profile enabled, many profiles disabled, and then the ability to switch from one to the other. And that obviously impacts a lot on the architecture of the EUICC, on the architecture of the remote platform that will manage that. Uh, security is, is obviously a big concern for, for this kind of system. Uh, so that's basically what uh, has been standardized by the GSMA. Still working on it. And uh, yes, a lot of actors are really uh, now, now developing the system. Uh, on our side, so we are obviously developing on both sides, the EUICC, also the remote provisioning platform. Uh, and uh, so product that is called Pegasus, that just started. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's definitely what we want to address and uh, to really catch up with this uh, new mechanism for enabling the IoT uh, world for connected devices. Thank you. <laughs>